I'm telling you, my heart is full. My cup is overflowing. Amen, amen. We had a, just a powerful word, but the Taylor got anointed this morning. I mean, he got anointed this morning and, and did some good teaching. Let me encourage you, be a part of the teaching on Sunday mornings. Quarter to ten, kick the old flesh out of bed. Get your clothes done Saturday night. Get it all ready and come to church. Give him his day. And, 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 and uh, God will honor you for that. God will bless you for that. And not only that, you're laying up tr spiritual treasures in your spirit. You remember, God wants you to be rich toward him. Come on, church. And, and take every opportunity. Every opportunity. You know, you know, uh, I get, I, I want you to hear me here. I get, I get, uh, I look at different churches and different religions that don't know what you know. Amen. Don't have what you have. Amen. And I see them faithful. I see them committed to what they're doing. Right. And they don't, they don't know half of what you know and where you are and what you enjoy. Right. But yet, and then I see us who should know better right. play the fool. You play the fool. You take it for granted. Of what's here. Of what God's glory. God's power. God's word. What God is doing. In other words you say God I don't really appreciate that. You know. And God wants to do so much. I feel God wants to raise up this church. As a prophetic voice. I'm telling you before God Almighty. If he take me out right now. He wants to raise up this church as the mouthpiece for this county. Right. For Charles County, I'm telling you. I, yeah. I feel that in my spirit. Not only that, God showed it to me. Amen. Amen. Brother Taylor, I had what brought me here was a divine vision and a call. I'm not here just to spend time. I'm not here to take up time. God sent me here. Right. I'm on the divine mission from God for this area. Amen. Amen. I was to a church. I passed the New Hope, 925. That new auditorium I designed, and I was there for two and a half years, but the people didn't accept the vision. Yeah. And I thought, God, it was for there. But God has told me, no, it is yet to be birthed. It's yet to come into existence. Yeah. And God wants to do a phenomenal, I'm not talking about church, I'm talking about a supernatural, spiritual, a phenomenal work by his spirit. Amen. Amen. And it's not here, God will use somebody else or some of it, God's going to God's gonna bring the last, last day harvest in this area. Yes. <laughs> and there are two principalities over this county, all demon principalities. And they're suffocating this area. But God said, I'll, I'll bring breakthrough. I'll bring, I'll bring forth that which I ordained. And no hell can't stop it. No hell can't. No one can stop it. God's going to be magnified. He's going to be glorified in what he has ordained. And I, I want this church to be a part of that. I do. I do. I do. But, you know, me wanting it is different from you wanting it. I can preach all the cows come home. But if you don't want it, then God will move on and raise up someone else or something else to bring about his purpose, his will, and his plan. You know. God took me from Waldorf. He said, the work is finished. He said, I'm bringing you back to the work that I created for you. That's this. That's been eight years ago. Eight years ago since I left that, came in. And I'm, I'm asking the Lord, Lord, you know, how long, oh Lord, how long? I know, I know you're coming as soon. Sister Condes would tell me she had, she had a, uh, Sister Constant, uh, that she had a, had a dream or vision. She saw, she saw the ark of God uh, floating the ark is Christ 
And then behind the ark, she saw the white horse. Look at the white horse. And it was galloping. Look at it, the picture there, the white horse. Over there, down the bottom there, which is the Antichrist. And he was galloping speedily. But before he comes, the ark is coming. Do you hear me? He can't, the white horse can't ride unless the ark has come. And you better be in the ark. That's right. Did I say that correctly, Sister Constant? Look at it. Say The horse is the Antichrist. First comes the ark. And you better be in the ark. And But he's riding, coming. He's speedily coming. He's about to come. But before he comes, we're getting out of here. We're going home. And God is just showing her how close it is. How close it is. And I see the I, I, I see I see the gallop of the horse in the prophecy and everything being fulfilled, not only in America but all around the world. Everything is flipped on its head, and like everybody's going crazy. Everybody goes stupid. Like like you you know I mean like it doesn't make sense, you know, and it, and it's everywhere, you know, and and all that has to happen because there's a new system coming into existence, a new. A new, a new religion. The global world church is rising. The global world, one world power is rising. Everything is changing. That's why God says, "Stay, stay, stay, stay bolted to the ark. Stay in the boat. Say, stay in the boat. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together in the house of God, as you see the day of the coming of the Lord fast approaching. Stay in the ark. Stay in the ark." Noah and the family was in the ark. And the door was shut. The door's about to be shut. He's coming soon. Brother Taylor come. Open up, open up a scripture and prayer. Hallelujah. But he, he, he was anointed this morning. Oh my goodness. Taught the word of God. And then what a joy to have Sister Cal. I just cried. Hallelujah. Been almost two years. We love you. Missed you. Seemed like an eternity. Amen. Amen. A year. It seems like two years. I mean, I, I, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. But oh my goodness, oh, Lord. that's 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 reunion. What's going to be when we get home and we see everybody? Like what? What? And you got to take a double look because you're better looking back then. Because you you'll be in your new house. So I'll be in the new house. Wow, wow. God bless you. We're going to read in your hearing today, uh, St. John 17, uh, 1 to 10. These words spake Jesus and lifted <clears throat> and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, yes. that thy son also may glorify thee. Yes. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work that thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them that thou hast given me. For they are thine. And all mine are are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Let's bow ahead. Father, we do thank you today. We thank you for your spirit. 
that goes from heart to heart and breast to breast. Father, we thank you for that which you have blessed us with throughout this week. But more so, God, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives in us and leads us and guides us today. Father, we thank you that we have not an high priest that can be touched by our infirmities. Father, we thank you today that, that we are alive and that we are breathing and that we're moving. And Father God, this day, let us open up our hearts and our minds to the word that we may be ever the more careful to be what you have called us to be in this last and evil day. Unknown demand of God today. Bring the word in power. Bring the word in demonstration. Let our hearts be open. Let our minds be open. Let us be changed, God. Let us come for the change. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, we could do better than that. Come on, give the Lord a, a thundering round of applause. Clap your hands, holy people. Shout, shout, shout into God with a voice of victory, the voice of triumph, the voice of praise. Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, I found a word. I found a word that the Lord spoke to me a few years ago. And the Lord brought it back to me. How did he bring it? How did he bring it back to you? He told me where to look and where to find it. And I found it. And 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 I wrote it down. See this old paper here? I wrote and it was stuck in a lot of paper. But God said, I want you to read that again. So let me tell you what he said to me. It's a present word. I wrote present word, found in Isaiah 61, 7, verse 9. And this is the word he spoke. He spoke. He said, uh, present word, pastor. It says, uh, your reproach will become a twofold recompense. Wow. Say, say that. Your reproach will become a twofold recompense. Wow. Wow. I don't want to get in that this morning because that's a message in itself. But whatever the negative, God's going to return it twofold. Double. Somebody say amen. Amen. Oh, not cool. Hallelujah. See it here? God wanted me. Now, now let me, let me. Let me, let me say something. God wanted me to go back over that and declare it again. So I laid it out this morning when I came. I always like to lay things out before God. I said, now, Lord, look at this. Come here. I call heaven and earth as a week. Now I call you. I want you to read this. You gave this to me. And you brought this back to my attention. You told me where to find it. And I found it. You allowed me to find it. And I read it. And I told you I was going to bring it to the house and read it again and let you look over my shoulder with me. And we read it together. I said, now, Lord, fulfill this. I don't know what all this means. Bring it about. Bring it to pass for your kingdom, your namesake, your glory, your praise in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Now, why do you do that? I do that for your benefit. That when God gives you something, write it down. Uh, put it where, and date, always date things. Put date, year, and month, and time on. I, oh, I do that with everything. That when you look back, you know, uh, 2000 year, not 2023, or 2000, 1975, whatever you can, wow. You can, you can realize that we're, wow, look what God has done. And you can look back on your life. What he spoke into your life and see things manifest. Somebody say amen. amen. Last Sunday, I had a sister uh, greet me at the church at the, at the, they, they were leaving, and she was like broken. She said, I lost my checkbook. Yeah. Pastor, I don't, I, I can't afford to lose my, I lost my checkbook. I said, let's pray. Mm -hmm. We prayed right there. And I said, Father, bring it back to her mind, to her memory where she left it, or what happened to it, recover it, and give it back to her. We prayed for her. She came to church Friday. And she says, she says, Pastor, God gave me my checkbook. I found my checkbook. I 
said, where was it? She said, it was in, I went grocery shopping and it fell in the grocery bag. And as I took the groceries out, I put the grocery, I put the bag in the trash can. But the checkbook was in the disposable grocery bag, the plastic bag. And she said, the Lord brought it all back. I said, go to the trash can. And it's in the bag. Does God talk like that? Ask her, she'll tell you. Because you see, she wanted to pay her tithes for Sunday. And she said, Pastor, I don't have my checkbook. But guess what? She bought the tithe Fridays. Hey, hey, come on, church. Come on, don't ask God for something and you don't do right on your part. She said, I got my tithe. She said, now I'm able to write my tithe. Somebody come rejoice with me. Hallelujah. 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 See, I'm trying to tell you what God is doing. God is moving. God is working. If we would allow him, if we believe, that's why I do these things. That's why I show them. It's her name, her tie for the month. I mean for the week. Last Sunday. She's not here today, but she was here Friday. Here last Sunday. She said, but now I'm able to write my tithe. Isn't that wonderful? And I prayed over her and asked God to bless her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen and amen. Sister Kay, I forgot to put all these envelopes in there. Come on, put them in there. Including her, her, her tithe. Amen. Somebody say praise God. Ain't God good. Ain't God good. That's not good English. Ain't God good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Man. Hey, guess what? I was just telling them how you found your checkbook. How God gave you the, your, your checkbook. Say, so, see, talking about it, she walks in the door. Amen. Hallelujah. She's clapping her hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Oh, God. God, God always shows up and confirms. Well, oh, oh, if it's God, he's always confirmed what you're saying. Amen. 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 You know, there's something very strange happening. It, it's beautiful in the house. Yes, it is. The beauty of God, the glory of God, the presence of God. Hallelujah. I want to talk about prayer this morning. But the Taylor read uh, uh, from 1 to 10, and that's my, my scripture. But we can never read it enough. I'm going to read it again because I want to get into it. Uh, John 17, 1. Let's look at this. Powerful, 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 powerful word. We talked about the prayer that Jesus prayed. St. John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 1. This is a seven-point prayer. It's a prayer of perfection here. The seven-point prayer. And uh, let's look at this. And Jesus spoke through these words and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your son also may glorify you. Is that your heart? You ever prayed a prayer like that? Father, glorify your daughter. Glorify me that I may glorify you. Wow, isn't that wonderful? As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you gave him. Wow. So who gives you to Jesus? Your father. Let's not leave him out of the equation. You know, some people, you know, some say, oh, Jesus, you know. He's only part of the Godhead. Realize the father is in the plan too with you. Come on. I said he's in the plan with you. And it is the father who gives you to the son. And Jesus said, while I was here, I kept them. Now he's not here, so who keeps us? He turns us over to the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said, now you are kept by the power of God. Talk to me here. Hallelujah. Come on, church. That was before Pentecost. So that was the Father give Christ. He kept them. He said, I kept them. 
So let's look at that. Anybody love the word? I love the word. Anybody love scripture? Oh, I love the word. Mm. And this is eternal life that they may know that you are the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Wow. Wow. Woe to those who, who just call God and leave our God because God is generic. Um, the word God is not offensive. Let's look at verse 3. Amen. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. How many of you love to glorify God on the earth? Amen. I have finished the work that you have given me. Are you, work, are, you, are you working the works that he's given you? And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself. Wow. With the glory which I had with you before the world was. Before the universe, before the cosmos, before anything that is. He is. I am that I am. Wow. So Jesus, he prays for himself. Then he prays for the disciple. Look at verse 6. I have, man, I have manifest, that word manifest, reveal, means reveal. I have revealed your name. I have showed, I have manifest your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. I like what Paul said. I saved to know nothing among you save Jesus and him crucified. They were yours. Look at what Jesus reaffirms again. These men, they were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. Everything God has given you are from God. You have nothing you can say that's mine. The strength, the ability, the knowledge, it all came. It all comes from him. Look at verse 8. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. Hallelujah. Anybody believe the word? I want to tell you, if, if, if you don't, if you don't, does anybody believe the word is Christ? The word is God? Does anybody believe, anybody believe that the word is the final authority with God? The word is the final authority with God? The word is Christ manifest. The vol in the volume of the book, Look at verse 9. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. I think I read that the fourth time. For they are yours. Here Jesus gives them back to the Father. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, how would you hear that? Hallelujah. The Father gives to Jesus, and Jesus say thank you, and he gives them back to the Father. Hallelujah. Oh, God's giving you everything and everything you have, you give back to him, including you. Say everything. 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 Not some things. Everything. Let me tell you, when you come to that place in your life and you're able to do that without fear of the flesh, fear of death, fear of man, come on, fear of self, God takes note of you. God sits up and says, wow, because everybody's not there. Everybody don't want to be there. Everybody don't trust God to that degree. Hello? Yes. Yes. And you don't know.
know what freedom is until you come into that place. Now you say, I'm free. And now you can say the scripture, he whom the son has set free is free indeed. Stand firm in the liberty. Come on, no bondage, no fear in the liberty. Wherefore Christ hath made you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, the bondage of fear. Fear is bondage and fear brings torment and turmoil. And fear cancels out faith. Lord, I'm going to go through this, but I got a message here. Look at verse 10. All are mine and yours are yours. All are mine, no, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Wow. Let's back up and look at that again. And all are mine, say with me, all that I am, all that I possess are yours, and all mine are yours. Can you say this to God? If you can do that, then you can say, all yours are mine. And I'm glorified in them. I'm glorified in the Father and in the Son. Look at verse 11. Now I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep, keep through your name. Wow. Say, say his name is power. Yeah. Keep through your name. Those whom you have, have it again. Those whom you gave me. I have kept and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, which is Judas, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves so even though you in the world it's God's will that his joy be fulfilled in you oh I'm in the world but not of the world but I can have his joy I can have his peace uh, my peace I give you my peace I leave with you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid and the peace that surpasseth all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. I've come that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. Turn to somebody and say, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the half has yet to be told. Oh, for the joy of the Lord is my Strange, hallelujah. Rejoice, and again I say rejoice in the Lord your God. Rejoice in Him. Lift up your head. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voice as a sound of a trumpet and glorify your Father which is in heaven. My God, I feel the glory of God in this. This place he toposhe rapataka hana na korola bokoshaya. I feel the glory, the power, and the presence of Jesus in the house. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We're in the world, but not of the world. Jesus says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Oh, oh, I'm kept by the power of God from the evil one. And that wicked one touches you not. Somebody praise him. Hallelujah. I'm kept. 
and kept. The Bible said we are the preserves. Say, say, say we're the preserves. We're not jam. We're the preserves. That's better than jam. I don't buy jam. I buy preserves. Because I will taste the fruit. See, the preserves is the fruit in your life. Don't you think the devil like to crack your jar and put his thing in your life and taste the preserve? He can't do it because guess what? God sealed it. <laughs> ah, he's put a seal around the jar. The jar is you. You seal with the earnest of the spirit and the sealing is to keep the freshness of the presence of God in your life. Come on, talk to me here. I thought she mamaka handaraba. Oh, hallelujah. And let me tell you, you are sealed for the day of God, for the coming of Christ. No one can break the seal except you. The devil can't break it. He could come with beady eyes looking at it, sniffing it, but he can't get it. He can't touch it. God will never break it. Say it. He'll never. Because he sealed you for eternity. He'll never break it. But you have, say with me, desire, choice, and will. And he'll never take that from you. That makes you a free moral agent. Talk to me here and say amen. amen. But if you break it, you have no promise that he'll come seal you again. And if you break it, you have no promise. Right. You'll get your spiritual heritage back again. Because you open yourself up to the enemy. And you come out from under the covering of God. Now you become vulnerable. And he could do whatever he wants to do because you gave him the right. Talk to me here. You gave him the legal right. And all God could do is stand and watch him blow your head off and destroy you and kill you because he said I might never get another chance for the thief cometh not before to steal to kill and to destroy anybody hear me here today oh hallelujah the bible said the devil your adversary is as a roaring lion going to and fro seeking whom he may devour long as you keep the seal. Somebody say amen. amen. Not only the seal is the seal to preserve, but the seal is the signet that God gives the bride. Somebody say amen. amen. Say I got a ring he gave me. And it's the seal in my heart, in my life. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, ah hallelujah. Ah, when I got engaged, I gave my wife a a, uh, a, an engagement ring. I didn't have much money back then because I, I gave it all away. But I had enough to get her a little ring. Since then, I got her a ring that she really wanted. She still got the, she said, remember this? I said, yeah. We got married with it. I said, yeah. Yeah. But you see, God give us the seal of the Spirit. Ah. Oh, and you will forever wear that. Somebody say amen. You will forever, you will never take it off. You will forever wear the seal of the Spirit of God on your life, even in eternity. Oh, somebody praise God. Hallelujah for the quickening, the anointing, the sealing of the Spirit of God. They are not of the world, Jesus says, of the body of Christ. They're not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. The word sanctifies. The word washes and purifies. The word washes with the washing of water by the word. Now you are clean with the word that I have spoken spoken to you. Ah, the word cleans you. The word sanctifies you. The word washes you. Oh, hallelujah. Ah. Let me share something once again. 
God gives us a thorough washing, Brother Taylor. You get three washings. Wow. My, my washing machine doesn't even do that. He yeah, but three wash. Number one, he washes the soul in the blood. Come on. What can wash away my sin? The soul, that's you, the person. The soul in the blood. He washes your spirit. With the washing is the with the washing and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. That's Bible. Talk to me here. So my spirit are washed. Oh, oh, hallelujah. You ever met somebody said who, who who they say they profess they know God and they're saved, but they got a bad spirit. They mind, ooh, you just got a bad spirit. Come on, come on. Some of you say, mm -hmm. And then he washes the flesh. Say the flesh. By the word. Wow. Three washings. The washing by the blood, the soul. The washing. The washing of the spirit by the spirit. The washing of the body by the word. Now you are clean. <laughs> by the word that I have spoken unto you. Be you clean that bear the vessel of God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Clean. Pure. Bless are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Hallelujah. No flaw. No spot. No, no wrinkle. Nothing out of the earth. Everything is clean, holy, righteous, godly, purified, hallelujah, by the blood, by the spirit, by the word, somebody praise him in the house, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of God. I, I don't know if I'm going to, here's the message. I'm, I, I don't know. I, I'm still in the word here. Oh. The message says the prayer that Christ prayed for his own. That's the message. But I, I, I'm still hearing the word. I don't know about you, but I like the word better than my message. <laughs> You'll get that tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're not of the world, just as I sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. For their sake, I sanctify myself that they all, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Wow. The word, the truth, sanctified. Anybody know what sanctification means? That's a definite work of the grace of God. That's God cut away all the deadness, all the dead branches that doesn't bear fruit. And he cuts it. He prunes it. He, he oh, some of you feel, said, oh God, you come out about something will die. There's nothing left of me. God said, good. That's why I want you. I want nothing of you. All of me. Hallelujah. Oh. And then God come with the final pruning cheers. And you say, oh God. He said, it's you. And he cuts away everything you leaning on, hanging on to. He cuts you away. And tell you, you have nothing but him. Now he said, come to me. Come, come to me. Come unto me. To those who would come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Come you, come to me. I want you. Hallelujah. I'll never forget the Lord came to me. And he said, I want you. You come to me. Come to me. Will you come to me? Hallelujah. I said, God, I got over. He said, it's nothing. Will you come to me? Uh, he said, give it away. Don't even waste time to sell it. Give it away. You come to me. And I said, yes. And I went for broke. I, I just gave it all away. I gave a double apartment house. I had a brand new cougar coupe. I had money. I had the money. 
Money. I didn't even know what to do with money. I had money. God blessed me like, what? Whew. He blessed me to show me yes. his glory. Because then he took me through a lean place after I came to him. Oh, Lord. I needed a job. Like, what? I said, God, I just left all of that. He said, I know it. And guess what job he gave me? I, I rubber boots up to my, 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 past my knee with a plumber and poop. I'm telling you, like what? Like God, what do you, what? I mean, I was in sewer, backup sewer. Working with plumbers. And I said, God, what are you, what, what are you saying? <laughs> honor, it's honor, yes. But you see, he, he brought me from the high to the low. Now, let me tell you what he'll do. He's not going to stay there. But once you get it, you learn it. Now he's going to take you back up. Come on. Hallelujah. That's what he did with Joseph. Come on. Come on. He put him from high to the pit and back to the Prime Minister of Egypt. Come on, church. Over, over, over the world. Because Egypt run the world. And God can now, not only that, God, but now God can trust you with money. God can trust you with things. Because you pass the test. You don't blink an eye. You don't give it second thoughts. You, you don't haggle with God. I got I got pay. And you nickel and dime God to death. I get I, I, I get tickled with folks when they pay their tithes and, and they buy 21 cents. Like what? Like round it off to a dollar. At least, you know? And 14 cents. You spend the time 14 cents. Like what? You understand, you understand what I'm saying? Some of you don't like what I'm just saying. <laughs> I just smile. I just don't love this person. Bless him. You'll get that tomorrow. It'll hit you like a light bulb. Oh, that's what he meant. Smile at me. Hallelujah. Jesus prayed for all believers. First he prayed for himself, he prayed for the disciples, and then he prayed for all believers. Aren't you glad Jesus prayed for us? I, I don't know. Oh, how God, God is praying for you. He's praying for me. He's praying for us. He wants each and every one of you to make it, to come into the fullness, to experience all that he is and all that he has for you. He's rooting for you. He said, come on, baby. Come on, daughter. Come on, son. One more journey. You can make it. Hang in there. This is not it. This is not it. This is a test. This is a test. This is a trying of your faith. A trying of your heart. Hang in there. Be faithful unto death. And thou shalt receive a crown of life. It's a test. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. God's doing that with your life. Testing one. Testing two. Testing three. Testing one, two, three. Come on, talk to me here. This is but a test. Woo! Oh, oh my God, wish I could preach this message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is only a test. <laughs> Will you pass the test? Will you be faithful through the test? I like when I'm watching a, 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 an old movie, a good movie, or, or, or something, and all of a sudden your teeth go, boing, 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 this is a test. And you got about three minutes. <laughs> like what? <laughs> That's what God does. He does. He interrupts your life. <laughs> boing, boing, boing. Boom. This is a test. 
like, oh. <laughs> but God never allows us to go through a test that he doesn't go with us. Go with us through the test. He said to you, honey, daughter, put your hand in my hand, son. Come on, we're going to walk through the fire together. We're going to walk through the flood. You'll not overtake you. We're going to walk through the fire. Come on, I'm going to bring you through the furnace of affliction. Wow. Whew. And you're going to walk through this together. Through the furnace of affliction. God takes you through this. My mother-in-law went to experience that. Brought her on deathbed. She was six months with her gut open. Couldn't even stitch her up. Lost half of her intestines with plastic. They had replaced half her inside intestines with plastic. Plastic intestines. Because they all got gangrene and rot. And two people ahead of her already died. And she's still living. Her gut open. Her, my wife used to go in there with a suction with the disinfectant. Just suck all that up. You could see her ribs, her organs. And, and they couldn't sew her up. They, she had to heal from within. Oh, Lord. I'm, talk about a furnace of affliction. But then her husband, my father, and all would read. And, and God spoke to her a, a word. He, he was reading. And then the Spirit of the Lord said, that word for you. Lay hold of it. And she said, Aubrey, read that again. And he read it again. He said, she said, read it again. And he read it again. She said, that's mine. And she laid a hold of it and brought her from death. She's still living, 94 years old, this October. Well, outlive her husband. My God Almighty. Tell me, tell me God doesn't do it right. I tell you, I said God does it right. God shows you his glory. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's got all the plastic in her. I remember for the first six months she came home, she had to take nothing but castor oil. And clear oil, you buy it in the store. Just drink it to, to get her system used to the plastic. It's like, oh, furnace of affliction. God said, I'll be with you. And God brought her out. God brought her out. She's still living today. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. What a God. What a God. What a God. Hallelujah. Hold fast to him. Don't. Don't you let him go. Cast not your confidence away from him. Hold fast to God's unchanging hand. No matter the cost, no matter what you go through, God is faithful. God is faithful. That promise. Hallelujah. Let's wrap this up. Look at, look at verse 20. I'm just going to hold this message for another day. Is that all right? Hallelujah. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, through the word of the disciples. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. Wow. Wow. Listen, it's God's will that all of his children be one. See, the enemy comes and divides the family. How does he divide it? Through pride, through the flesh, through, through ignorance. For Jesus said, you commit error not knowing the scripture. That's ignorance. And that's not an excuse. And, 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 but yet, yet, you see, so the body is cut up and divided. Because you only have one word. Come on, you don't have 20, 50 bodies. You got one word. Come on. You got one word. You read the same thing I got. But, but, but many don't want to be obedient to the word he gives us. And so they want to choose and pick, pick and choose. And, and carve up the word. Well, we're this, and we're that, and we're that, and we're that, because I hold on to this. God said, we're one. He said, one Lord, one family, one body, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. I'm on one Holy Ghost, one salvation. Everything is one. Hallelujah. 
Not 20 cents. Quit, quit dividing up the pie. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Said so one, one, one body. Uh, God doesn't divide the body. Because he's the head of the body. Somebody say amen. amen. You cut up the body, body won't live. And that's the problem with the church. The church is dying. The church like you know it. Because the church had so much cuts. And so much slashes. And so much divisions. Uh, anybody hear me here? You start cutting up yourself. Cutting up the body. And so where the church doesn't have a witness to the world. Because the church is weak and dying. And all disjointed and cut up and, and fragmented. Anybody hear me here today? Oh, God's will is there. Just like Israel. He wanted Israel to be that jewel, that peculiar nation to the world and then reneged on it. So now he goes to what? The Gentiles to make Israel challenge. He said, now you, you, you. And then, and now, now in the end he's going to combine both together, both Jew and Gentile. Through Christ, one new man, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. No more divisions. No more separation. A whole body. Oh, Jew and Gentile. Born nor free, male nor female. Hallelujah. One healthy, whole new man in Christ hallelujah praise God look at verse 22 he said and the glory which you gave me I have given them wow Who? he giveth grace and glory ah he giveth grace said he giveth Jesus give me grace and glory now we talk about the grace but we don't talk about the glory He giveth grace and glory. Now listen to me. Just as much he gives grace, he gives glory. Because glory is something that builds. Say, say it builds. It's like, it's, like the, it's like the clam that tries to coat the grain of sand and comes out making a pearl. Come on, he just gives glory. He said, glory, until it becomes, save me, the kabod, the weightiness, the full overcoat, the covering. Oh, blessed God. Come on, church, the kabod of his glory. So you want to be where God wants you? You want to do what he told you to do? You want to be obedient? You want to be faithful? You want to be committed that the glory will continue to coat you every day? The glory, the glory. The glory, the glory, the glory, until it builds into an overcoat, a covering, the weightiness of a kabod. Somebody praise him in the house. Pastor, where do you get this stuff from? Hear what Paul says. He said, there's one glory of the moon, one glory of the sun, one glory of the stars. Each star differs in brilliancy, in glory. So are you at the resurrection. Everybody's not coming out with the same dimension of God's glory. It depends on you. How faithful will you be? How obedient will you be? How much do you love him? How much do you love him? How faithful are you? Are you trustworthy? Can I trust you with the things of God? Can I trust you with the eternal? Can I trust you with the spiritual? Can I trust you that you do right? Do you know this ministry is an entrustment God gave me? Every every preacher, every teacher, every fivefold, every one of the fivefold, that's a gift God entrusts you. And you will stand before God and give account for that which God has given you. God has entrusted you. My God, I'd rather preach truth than to preach a lie or to sugarcoat this or water this down if my life depended on it. I'd rather die and go home today. I, I, I declare to you the adulterated word of God the uncompromising word of God talk to me here the full truth the revelated truth the rhema word I hold nothing back from you nothing I keep nothing back from you no matter what it costs me nothing 
nothing. Because I know one day I'm going to stand before the, 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 the great shepherd. And I want, I want the shepherd's crown. One of the, one of the crowns is a shepherd's crown. And I want to receive that, Brother Taylor. Whatever the cause, I want to receive. It's like I want all the crowns. I want, I want, I'm, I'm, I'm greedy. I'm, I'm, I'm hoggish. Uh, that's all people word, hoggish. My grandma's been saying, now child, don't be hoggish. Come on, talk to me here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hoggish, greedy. Come on. Oh, but when it comes to the eternal and the spiritual, I want to be hoggish. I want to be greedy. Oh, yes. I want all that God has for me. Every opportunity he sends my way, help me by the grace of God to take advantage of it and to lay up treasures in the kingdom of God, treasures in the treasure house that I may be found rich toward God. Oh, God Almighty. Lord, help me preach this message. Oh, hallelujah. Coming down the wire. Look at verse 23. Well, and the glory which you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one as we are one. I in them. Come on. I am my beloved. And my beloved is mine. I in them and you in me. Come on. Look at, the, look at both sides of the coin here. Most of the church only share one side of the coin. You in Christ. If any man be in Christ. Well, what about you being in him? For you to be in him, you got to get rid of you. So he could take the place of you. Come on, talk to me here. Hallelujah. That's where death comes. That's where the cross comes. That's where the sword comes. Come on, church. I die by faith. So he died literally. But I die by faith. With him, say with him. You don't die by yourself. By faith you die with him in his cross. What do you die to? I die to sin. I die to the world, my natural environment. I die to self, the old self. The old self that will send you to hell. The old you. I die to old self. And I die to the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of Satan. I die to it all. Oh my God. Tell you died all. Paul said, I die daily that I might live, yet not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Hallelujah. This is where you are, you have nothing outside of him. I not want him. Ah, now, 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 you can be filled with all of the fullness of God and of Christ. Now, you can be made perfect and complete in him. Oh, hallelujah. Now, there's nothing off the table. God can fill you with everything that he is and everything that he has. For now, you have come into that capacity to receive. Wow. As long as you're in it, you're not there to receive it. Because self will not allow it. Said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. You could talk to other cows come home, but you got to do it. Say, I got to walk in it. I got to quit talking in it and walk it out. I got to quit talking and live in it. It's like folks getting married. Oh, Pasha. I love her. I said, do you know her? I just love her. Oh, I love, he's a hunk. I just love him. I said, do you know him? <laughs> do, do you really know him? Do you really know her? Are you just looking at the, the frame? And you're looking at the house. Look in the eye and look in the soul. Open the door. Lift, lift the hood of the car. Check out, check it out. Open the doors. Open the back trunk. Come on, come on, come on. Don't leave nothing untouched. Don't leave nothing hid. Check it out. Talk where you want to go in life. You know, 
in the early days, people used to talk of where they want to go together. Now they just want to get in the sack. Like what talk? That's why you have what you have in these last days. Nobody know each other anymore. Now you got social media. Here's this boy and this guy, and they're engaged. And they're texting, I love you. She texts, but I love you. Texting in the same boot. She's looking at him. Why don't you open your mouth and tell him? Texting. I love that's where we are. Confusion, chaos, stupidity, craziness. That's where we are in life. You know the Lord's coming soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When was the last time you told Jesus you love him? Or do you text him too? I love you, Jesus. See, I got you the smile. Pastor told her funny. My, my wife would crack up if she had heard that. Because she know I'm so serious. And she said, you told her funny today. <laughs> Text Jesus. I love, I love you. All right. 24. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me. I think I've read that six times. You gave me. 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 Wow. And, and what when when God the Father give you to Jesus, Jesus takes you, He affirms you. Come on, and then He puts you back in Daddy's hands. Oh, oh, no man cometh to the Father but through me. Hallelujah! He gives you back to Daddy. I'm on church. Hallelujah! Oh, my blessed God. Everything, everything is in unison. Everything is in confirmation. Everything is in oneness. He said, my Lord, nothing done underhand, overhand. Everything is, everything is plain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at 23. I and them and you and me that they may be made perfect, look at this, in one. See, this is where the perfection comes in. You and him, not he and you. That's the perfection. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, Father. He didn't say Jesus. Jesus calls on his Father. He's got a Father. Father, I desire that they also... Whom you get, have it again. You gave me. Whom you gave me may be with me. Wow, where I am. Huh? Anybody want to be with Jesus? He said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many, are many rooms, are many mansions. If it went on so I would told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also confirmation of what he's praying to the Father for every believer. Somebody say praise him. He said, I pray that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. That's deep. Let me back up. That's deep. Do you know? Do you know there's going to come a day when we leave this world? That we're going to behold the full, manifest, manifold glory of Christ. I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the glory that he has. Even when he, even when he had it with the Father. For he, that will be restored to him. The full, manifest, manifold glory. And you're going to be able to be able to comprehend that to be a part of that because you will also be in the glory of God. 
Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like Moses on the mountaintop in the glory. He's in the glory. God is the glory. And the glory on the mountaintop. And Moses in the glory. Ah, But something happened when he came down from the mountain. The glory was still with him. And it blinded those who were looking. Ah, I can't look at him. Somebody get a blanket. Somebody, come on, throw it on Moses' face. Wow. Wow. Hear what, the, hear what the Bible said. The Bible said the latter, the latter glory is going to be far more greater than the glory that Moses had because Moses had it under the law. We've got it in Christ. Oh my God. We've got it through the through Kotoshe. Shamamaka Rapataka. My God Almighty. We've got it in Him. The glory, the greater, the kabod, the dimension of the full manifest manifold glory of Christ. want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all pass home at last ever to rejoice hallelujah I got a hold of something here. I can't get it loose. And I'm just in the word. Hallelujah. That's when the Holy Ghost preached the scriptures. I like that. Ha. Ah, when the Holy Ghost preaches the scriptures to you. Isn't that wonderful? That's better than any message I could ever write. Wow, time's gone. I got one o'clock. Five after one. I got communion. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. Look at verse 25. Oh righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I know you. And these have known you, known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name. And will declare it that the love with which you love me may be in them as I in them. What did he what did he close it up? I in them, not you in him. I that's completion there. Say I in them. That's a full coin. The first part of the coin of any man being Christ is a new creature. Flip the coin. Now Christ in you the hope of glory. That's completion. That's the fullness. Come on, talk to that's the full. Most churches only stir the first half of the coin. They leave you out of it because you know why? The cost comes in. The first part is all free. Say it, it's all free. God give you the faith, the grace, and the gift. It's all free. You've got no skin in it. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the other half to make you where God wants to bring you. Somebody say amen. The Christ in you, the hope of glory. Stand on your feet with me. Hallelujah, Messiah. Lift your hand, lift your heart. Father, just glorify him in this word. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the word that you've given. I thank you for the word that went forth today. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the power and the presence of God. Lord, the fresh oil be poured out. The fresh fire of your glory. The wind of your spirit blowing in this house. The manifest glory of God in the temple. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you. We lift you high for you are worthy. 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 Holy. Holy. Holy is the Lord our God. 
God is our Savior, our Father, to the good Holy Ghost. We honor you. We bless you. And we praise you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your witness. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Come here, Brother Taylor. Come here, my brother. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love this man. I love my brother. I love to hear him teach. Amen. I love to hear him teach too, Pastor. He got anointed. I mean some other, but 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 this morning he seemed like he had a double measure. And, uh, and God anointed. He, I mean, he taught with an anointing on him this morning. Love you. I want you to serve communion. You may be seated. God bless you. I want to take some scripture with you in 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 25. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you. But the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament, the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. In Luke 22, 9 through 20, I mean 19 through 20, two verses. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body, my flesh, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new testament, the new covenant in my Testament means covenant in my blood. And then in John 6, 53, 56. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, <clears throat> you have no life in you because life is in the blood. His life is in his blood. Somebody say amen. I'm talking about spiritual life. Your life is in your blood. If you bleed out, you die. If your heart quits pumping, you drop dead. Spiritually, the life is in the blood of Christ. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Whosoever eat in my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life. Because you receive what? His life. And I will raise him up. And you got a promise. I will raise him up in the last day. If you go by the grave, I will raise you up. If you're in the rapture, I will raise you up. Somebody say amen. amen. For my flesh is meat, food, indeed. Jesus said, I've got food that you know not of. And my blood is drink, indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. See the two sides of the coin. Only in the two sides of the coin will you receive his life and his blood and all that he has for you in communion. I want you to hear that. That's what he says. We forget what he says. Hello? Let that sink in. That's what he says. He said that about himself. Let me read it again to you. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me. See, if you're going to do that, dwell in him. And not only you in him, but now I in you. Come on. Remember the closing of the prayer? All right. Like, why don't the church get that? I've been in church all my life before I was called into the prayer. I never heard that. Nobody touch that. Like, what? What? Nobody touch it. They don't, they, they don't touch the other side of the word. Which, which, which you are a part of it. I'm not talking about your salvation. I'm talking about the fullness and the growing 
and the maturing and the becoming. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 I hear so many preachers say God does it all. That's not true. That's not Bible. It's not scripture. That's not scripture. Stretch forth your hand to the table. Now we recognize that this is what? Unleavened bread and grape juice. That's what we see. And that's what we will taste. Unsalted bread. But by faith, say by faith, I see different. I see his body. I see his blood. And by faith, I believe what I see in the spirit. And I partake by faith. And I believe that this is his body. And this is his blood. She says, take, take, for this is my body. Take the cup, drink all of it, for this is my blood. Which is shed for you. What can wash away my sins? The cleansing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that washes me white as snow. There is no other fountain that I know but the fountain of the shed blood of Jesus. There's a fountain filled with blood and it's drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath the blood losing all their guilty stains. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If, you're, if you have any sickness today I want you, when you take it believe God. Say, Lord, Heal me now. I declare I am healed. I believe I am healed. I believe when I first prayed. And Lord, I believe right up to, right now. I even believe now. I believe and I will continue to believe because I declare I will walk in the vine health. I will walk in the very life and the virtue. First lid, take the bread out with you. Shake it up for you. This is settles. Now let's pray. Father, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I lift the bread to you. I declare, Jesus, this is the bread of God, the bread of life. Jesus, you said, I am that living bread. You said, I'm the bread that came down from God out of heaven. You said if you eat of this bread, we shall not die, but that we shall live forever. Declare, Lord, I desire to live forever with you. For in you we live, in you we move and animate and exist, in you we have our being. Take the bread and save me, and his body was broken. Not one bone, just the body broken for me. The veil, flesh torn giving me access behind the veil. Wow, that's beautiful to know. Now say to me, I lift the bread to you in celebration with a joyful heart, with thanksgiving, in honor and glory and praise to my Father, my God, my Lord, to the good Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I eat of this bread. Rejoice and eat with me. Your body torn, your flesh plowed like a field. 
body broken like the clogs of sod in the earth, ripped, broken, torn, the veil in the temple, torn, separated, giving me access. Take the cup with me. Pull the lid. Said me, Lord Jesus, with this cup, I lift you up. Your shed blood poured out for my life, poured out for my sins, poured out for my justification, my regeneration, my new birth. I thank you for by your blood I am made holy. By your blood I am made whole in the name of Jesus. I lift the cup to you in worship, in thanksgiving, in celebration to my beautiful Lord, my wonderful Savior. And in Jesus' name, I drink of this cup. Rejoice and drink with me that you may receive a fresh infusion of his life in you, in Jesus' name. Would you stand on your feet? Would you lift your heart, lift your hand, lift your faith? Would you thank him right now? Father, we thank you. Lord God, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We praise you. Lord God, words are inadequate to express our heartfelt love and our appreciation for you. You're so wonderful. You're so beautiful. You're so, so awesome. The mighty God, my Savior, my Father, my God, my Lord. Oh, to the good Holy Ghost, we honor you. We love you. Thank you for this service. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that you preach your word, your own word this morning. You ministered your word by your spirit. And oh God, how you touched us, how you spoke to us, how you quickened us, how you ministered to us through your own word by your anointed spirit. We say thank you. You're such a good God. You're such a good father. Oh Lord, we bless you today. We lift you high. We worship and honor you. We bless and magnify you, glorify, lift up and exalt you, for you are worthy. You're worthy of my love, our love, our faith, our lives. You're worthy. You're holy. You're worthy of your sacrifice. You're worthy of the price you paid, the blood you shed, the cross you bore, the life you gave. You're worthy. You're worthy of my life. You're worthy. Therefore, Lord God, I give my life to you. I give it to you. I give it a long time ago, but I give it a fresh and anew. This morning, I re renew my covenant. I renew my faith. I, oh, God, I give myself to you, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable worship, my reasonable service. And I give you praise. And I give you thanks. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look upon you with grace and favor. May he be gracious unto you. May the Lord your God lift up his countenance upon you. And may he fill you with his peace. Overwhelm you with his joy. May he go before you with, with singing. And may he dance over your life this coming week. Hallelujah. And may he declare your name to the heavenlies. Hallelujah. That's what he said he'll do. He'll declare your name. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I praise you. 
And somebody's been praying for this church. I don't know who's praying, but you keep praying. You keep praying. You keep believing. I'm expecting something to happen. You keep pouring heart lead down a hole, something's going to give. Huh? I said, something's going to give. I said, something's going to give. Hallelujah. 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 I love you. Love you.